midst of us. Such a joy to praise his holy name. What a privilege. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Although we may not be able to see, although we may not be able to feel, but he is working. He is working. Oh, it's always unsatisfied. It, there's such a feeling of unsatisfaction though. To whatever extent we glorify his name, we just feel like, oh, more, 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 more of him. He's such a good God. He's such a loving God. And his presence fills us with his joy. Our spirit, our spirit is satisfied when, when gets in contact with his creator. Our spirit needs the presence of Father. Our spirit needs infilling of Holy Spirit. And otherwise, we always feel that vacuum. And the more he fills us, the more we want him, the more we want him. Oh, there is so much of joy in his presence. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify for who you are and everything that you do for us, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. And this morning, before going into word, let me take this opportunity to congratulate, to say a word of blessing, to thank every mother. Because today the whole world is celebrating Mother's Day. So, Everyone and and oh, I was thinking about this and I was feeling like what a blessing What a blessing a woman is Not only just because you are physically a mother physically someone can be called as mother, but but the but the the heart that you have the motherly heart that you have uh, uh, The care the love the concern that you have not only towards your own physical children, but otherwise the motherly. I, I know and I want to admit it very openly that as a man, probably I may not be able to ever, ever understand that. But what a blessing that you are. What a blessing every mother is. The more I think about it, the more I feel like, wow, God, only you can create someone with such heart. And, and thank you so much for everything that you do as a mother, not only for your own children, physically, God, whom God has blessed you as physical children, but otherwise, the love that you share to others as a mother, the, the approach that you have towards others, the, the way you look at others with that motherly heart. Thank you so much. I sometimes feel if we do not have, have that type of motherly heart in this earth, we would have missed such love, such love. So with right, right from the depth of my heart, uh, I want to take this opportunity to everyone who is watching us, everyone who is mother, uh, either physically or otherwise spiritual mothers and mothers in every sense. Thank you. God bless you. You are a blessing. Without you, we would not have been able to smile every time you are the reason of our smile and especially i want to say thank you for all the mothers god has given me all over here in this corner of the world i am blessed <laughs> i am blessed i have such a treasure if any time i get opportunity to go back to india i will have lots of stories about all of my mothers over here who show so much of love who shows so much of care, who shows so much of concern. Thank you so much. My words are short. I am short of words to actually express my thanks to each one of you. But you are such a blessing. Such a blessing. And uh, 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 although I lost my mom uh, quite early, but God gave me a wife like God had uh, provided uh, wife to Isaac when he had lost his mom uh, he got his wife Rebecca and she comforted him and uh, I know I I have been receiving blessings from Monica not only as uh, as a wife but most of the time because of the type of person I am she has to be like a mother who 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 has to be sometimes strict and sometimes loving most of the time loving <laughs> But, 
but i just i just want to acknowledge all the love that we receive from every mom and and you are a blessing so just before going into the word can we take one moment to pray for our dear mothers dear heavenly father we thank you lord for the motherly heart the mother that you you made thank you for that for that huge storage of love that you have given in this in this motherhood and we specially thank you for the mothers that you have given in our congregation lord we pray to you this morning at this time and we say lord bless them lord bless them in every way most of the time we do not know their needs and wants most of the time we do not know the pain that they go through most of the time the sacrifice they do for their children we we are not able to understand we are not able to see that but heavenly father we take this moment to look up to you and pray please bless them abundantly let the choicest blessings come over them father we thank you lord for all the mothers and we thank you for the heart that you have given to them let your blessing always flow over them and every mother who is connected with us lord we pray that your blessing will come over everyone father give us wisdom lord give us wisdom that we will respect them we will honor them we will take care of them yes lord give us wisdom to speak right words in their life that they will be encouraged they will be motivated they will they will they will feel happy they will feel received they will feel honored yes father holy spirit we thank you we thank you for the 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 gift of being a comforter and through them most of the time you work in our lives we thank you lord we thank you father in jesus name we pray amen amen i will not talk much on mothers day topic otherwise i will get emotional so let us directly come into the word <laughs> and you remember we are studying the riches of christ and i like the way paul uses the word unsearchable riches of christ and last time we had seen one of the riches in the form of the water and how jesus in the form of a spring in the form of the fountain or the depth of water and in the form of the streams that he blesses us and it's it's such a privilege to enjoy christ as a spring as a source to enjoy christ as a fountain to enjoy christ as streams of water let us move ahead today and see how else or what else the word tells us about jesus and the and the more we understand this i want to encourage you my dear brothers and sisters taste and enjoy and keep seeking jesus in these forms in these types because this is what god was working for israel israelites he did not want them to stay in egypt he did not want them to stay in the land of wilderness but he wanted them to reach to the land of rest to the promised land of canaan and that was something he was working for he was equipping them he was enabling them he was helping them so that they will be able to enjoy the fullness of the land of canaan the fullness of the land of rest and that is what he expects even today he does not want us to know jesus in glimpses he doesn't want us to enjoy christ in small types but he wants you and me to be able to enjoy christ in fullness all inclusive christ in the book of hebrew paul so clearly says that you are called for rest 
And this is the rest, the richness of Christ, the fullness of Christ. The more we will be able to know him, the more we will be able to enjoy him. Believe me, it will just keep on increasing and increasing. And the more we dig into this word of God, the more we will be able to see the richness of Christ. And every time we will feel that I hardly know Christ. I have hardly tasted Christ. I have hardly enjoyed Christ. There is so much to be enjoyed in Christ. There is vastness. There is so much in Christ. He is so good. He, when, when, the more we know about this, the more we will feel, Lord, thank you for creating me. Because in me, I can enjoy you. In me, I can understand you and know you and love you because you are worthy. Not only worthy, I, I, and I, I really cannot get that word. That it's it's so much of so much of fullness and love in Him. The more we receive, we feel I need more and more and more, Lord. That's how our Creator is. That's how our God is. Everything else, after tasting Christ and knowing Christ in fullness. Everything else gradually will start looking as simple things. There is nothing over, there is no beauty over here. Every beauty lies in my Christ. Every fullness lies in my Christ. And that is Jesus. That is Jesus. We need to move ahead from the step of understanding and looking at Jesus just someone who redeemed us. He did that. We do honor. We respect that. We receive that. But there is far beyond that. And we need to move stepwise. Gradually move ahead. To know and to enjoy and be in Christ more and more and more. Oh. That is what God wants. That is what God expects. That is what God delights in doing so. He finds his pleasure in revealing Jesus to us. So never ever be satisfied with how much you and I know Jesus. And always, every day morning, let this prayer be there. Let this curiosity be there. Let me know Christ in some new way today. Let me be able to see Jesus in different angle today. Let me know my creator, my savior Jesus in a new way today. And the more we will be hungry for him, the more we will be thirsty for him. Oh, very gladly he will reveal himself to us. And what a joy to know Christ. Let us see. The next verse, we are in Deuteronomy and we, we had seen from chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, last time we had seen verse 7. Today we will go to verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 8. And the word says, let me read it for you from KJV. And in KGV it is written, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8. A land of wheat. Be reminded, again he is speaking about land. And we have seen land represents the all-inclusive Christ. And so what is this land? Land of wheat and barley and wines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. So there are seven things that he speaks about. Seven food items that he is including in this verse. He speaks about two grains, wheat and barley. He speaks about four trees, wines, fig tree, 
pomegranate and olive and he also speaks about honey so two grains four trees one honey let me classify this in another way he speaks of plant kingdom which includes wheat barley wines fig trees pomegranates olive trees and he speaks of mixture of animal and plant kingdom in honey because we know how honey is made there is contribution of flowers as well as bees so plant kingdom as well as animal kingdom so both of them are used there and before going further you know what I am trying to say every single food item that is being mentioned over here it speaks about Jesus Christ every word when we read wheat when we read barley when we read wines when we read fig trees when we read pomegranates olive tree honey all these seven items they speak about Jesus Christ and it is interesting to see the different types revealed by these seven different food items okay so let us start seeing each item and see how it speaks about Jesus so let us start with wheat to to study wheat let us go into John chapter 12 verse 24 see gospel according to John chapter chapter 12 and verse 24 says verily verily I say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit and what is he speaking about when he is giving using this words he is actually speaking about himself and he very clearly says a corn of wheat one single corn of wheat and the wheat that he is mentioning over here is speaking about Jesus himself so the wheat that we have seen in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 8 speaks about Jesus Christ and what part of Jesus does it, does it contain or mention it speaks about the incarnation of Jesus Christ it speaks about being death of Jesus Christ it speaks of being buried the burial of Jesus Christ so the wheat the first word wheat which represents Jesus it represents the incarnation the coming of Jesus on the earth being sown and then being killed on the cross and then buried these three parts are covered in the word wheat before going into explanation let us also see the next word because that is equally important next word is Bali he speaks about Bali now uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 10 says that God had commanded Israelites to bring the first fruits for sacrifice whenever as a gift they were supposed to bring the first fruits and barley my dear brothers and sisters barley was the first fruit of their cultivation so barley was supposed to be brought as a gift unto the Lord in his temple that was supposed to be offered as gift unto the Lord because barley was the first fruit for Israelites and that's what uh, Leviticus 23rd chapter 10th verse says that bring the first fruit unto me now when we are speaking about this and we come into 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 you will know that Jesus Christ is the first fruit of 
resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first fruit of resurrection and all the believers will be the next fruits of resurrection after Jesus Christ. So what am I trying to portray? I'm trying to say that this barley, which was the first fruit of Israelites, which was supposed to be offered to God, Jesus Christ, Paul goes on to explain us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20, that Jesus is the first fruit of resurrection. And therefore, barley again represents Jesus himself. But what part of Jesus is represented by barley? Bali represents the resurrected form of Jesus Christ. Where wheat represents the incarnation of Jesus. Wheat represents the death of Jesus. Wheat represents the burial of Jesus. Then comes Bali. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, every word in the Bible, the sequence in the Bible matters. There is some or other hidden message that you will find the more you go into that. He used the word we first because that was representing the incarnation of Jesus, the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus Christ. And then he says that he is also a Bali. Now what does Bali mean? Bali is the first fruit which was supposed to be given to the Lord in his temple. And then Paul goes on to say in in, in 15 chapter 20th verse for of 1st Corinthians that Jesus is the first fruit of resurrection and this barley speaks of the resurrection part of Jesus Christ. So we have wheat, we have barley. We need to know Jesus as wheat. We also need to know Jesus as barley. And when we know Jesus as wheat, we understand him because this part of being wheat is incarnation, death and burial. You will find a limited life. Jesus had led a limited life for almost 33 and a half years. Being limited as a man, being limited as a son, being limited as a brother, being limited as a carpenter, being limited as a person in locality, he had that limited life. But praise be to the Lord, the same Jesus who was wheat, he became barley, resurrected. And the moment he comes into the phase of resurrection, he becomes unlimited. There is no more limitation. There is vastness, there is spaciousness now. He is unlimited being resurrected, being in the part of Bali. I know as, as a child of God, being in this world, we go through this experience of being weak in Christ, being limited the, in the place where we work. We wish to do many things. We wish to openly go and declare to people, no, this is how God can do. No, this is how God can enable us to do impossible. But we are limited. We cannot speak everything. We cannot do everything. We cannot go and just stretch everything. We, we, we get frustrated at times because of that limitation. There are times when bosses speaks to us certain words which we want to reciprocate by saying, hold on, I am a child of God and this is what I am called for. I do not want to be limited by what you are saying. But we go through the phase of limitation. We experience Christ as a weight, the way he himself limited himself, although he was God. He could have done anything and everything. Remember how he answered to his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane when they said, Lord, shall we just cut them? And Peter was pretty quick enough to cut the ear. And Jesus turned around and said, what are you thinking about yourself? Don't you think if with one prayer I can ask my father to send legions and he can save each one of us. He can send Angels who can protect us, but he limited. He was weak. 
There are times when you and I experience Jesus in the form of wheat. We think this should happen. That should happen. I'm a child of God. My prayer should re release this blessing, that blessing. True. Absolutely true. But we also need to experience Jesus in the form of wheat, my dear brothers and sisters. When you are a student, when you are an employee, when you are a person on this earth, we need to understand that we will have to experience Jesus in the form of wheat. But remember, but remember this thing. Always, always have this in your heart. That although you lead a life of limitation, you lead a life of wheat. What enables you to lead such life? The barley that lives inside you. The resurrected Christ that lives inside inside you the unlimited Christ that lives inside you enables you to lead that limited life of wheat in our strength probably we may not be able to control or we may not be able to leave our limited life outside there will be so much of frustration but what brings that smile on your face what brings that joy on your face the joy, the smile comes, the patience, the endurance comes because of the barley that lives inside you. The resurrected Christ that lives inside you. The, the unlimited Christ that lives inside you enables you to lead that limited life. You can still smile in those limitations. You may be going through lots of backbiting. You may be going through lots of lots of things being leg pulling going on or bullying going on. But still you will manage to smile. Probably you are going through sickness. Probably you are going through financial crisis. Probably you are going through emotional traumas. But what brings that smile on your face? The smile comes with the realization that the one who is inside me is the unlimited one. Is the unlimited one. He is the resurrected one. He is Bali. If you, if you come to John's chapter 6, let me show you something very interesting. Come to Gospel according to John. Chapter 6. And see, uh, yeah, and see verse 9. John chapter 6, verse 9. Let me read this for you in KJV. It says, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves. What loves? Not wheat. No, 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 no. Barley loves. And two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Hey. 5,000 men with their wives and their children. They are following Jesus. And there comes a moment when Jesus is asking his disciples. Maybe you can ask them to go back. The disciples come and say, Lord, it has been quite late. Why don't you ask them to go now? And what did Jesus say to the disciples? Jesus said to the disciples, why don't you feed them? Why don't you feed them? And they goes on, go on to say, Philip goes on to say, Oh Lord, we don't have that much money. We do not have that much food. And Jesus says, then what do you have? And what did they have? They had five loaves of barley and two fishes. And the moment Jesus hears, hears this, the moment Jesus heard this, Jesus said, give that to me. Give that to me. Oh, this barley love, give that to me. He takes that. He gives thanks to the Father. And then he gives it to the disciples and says, now go and distribute. 
go and distribute and you and I very well know not only the 5,000 men with their wives and children were fed but the collected leftover was 12 baskets full. That is the fullness of Jesus Christ. We may be limited in the form of wheat but we need to remember we have that barley inside us and this barley love that we have the moment we give that to the Lord this resurrected Christ he can multiply any limited thing that we submit to him to such an extent that the 5,000 men will be fed along with their wives along with their children they will be fed they will be filled and you will collect back 12 baskets full because the limitation is outside but the one who is inside he is the one who is resurrected there is no limitation to him no limitation to him that's Jesus that's Jesus you know my dear brothers and sisters at the start of this lockdown I was I was thinking this a lot oh Lord there are many in our congregation who do not have internet. Oh Lord, there are many in congregation who cannot get connected on Zoom. Oh Lord, there are many in our congregation who do not have Facebook account. How do you think I will be able to serve them? How do you think I will be able to provide the word to them? I know I cannot give them anything else. But the one thing that I feel I am called for is to serve them with the word. But with these given conditions, Father, I am not able to reach out to them. I will not be able to give the word to them. And that was my cry unto him. And then one word that was continuously coming to me on which I am standing even today. Keep doing what you have been called to do. And I was inquiring from the Lord. How do I do? So whatever sources are there, just keep doing. And now after four weeks, I can very firmly tell you that the, that the love that I had one loaf. I did not even have five loaves. I just had one loaf. But when I gave that one loaf to Christ and said, Lord, this is the only thing that I can do. Maybe Zoom we can start. Maybe Facebook we can start. I, we are not much equipped technically. But this is the only thing that we can do. But believe me, he just multiplied that one loaf. Not only to the people of this congregation, but to the entire world. He just multiplied because he is a resurrected Christ. He can multiply any limited thing to such vastness that everyone who is thirsty and hungry shall be fed. What is that you have? Give unto him. Even you find it in a limited condition. Give it unto him for the one who is inside us. He is Bali. He is Bali, the one unlimited, who can cover the entire world if he wants to. There are times when we feel like my testimony is so small. My testimony, testimony is not that influential. My testimony sounds so simple. But I want to tell you, that may be how you tested Jesus. But now it's the time to test Jesus as Bali. Give that small, simple testimony in his hand. And then see how he multiplies those five loaves into such quantity that thousands will be fed by your simple testimony. Lord, I cannot sing properly. Lord, I cannot play music properly. I just know few songs. I just have practiced one or two songs. I do not know much beyond that. Just hand it over to him. Hand it over to him. Understand the God you have. He is a God of multiplication. He will multiply. It's his job to multiply that. And it's our job to keep distributing that. Hand it over to him. He will do the multiplication. Keep distributing. People will be fed. Amen. People will be fed. Lord, I can do. I am doing such a minor job. I am doing such a small job in industry. In this company or in this place. How does that matter? It's, it's of no 
I, I really wish, Lord, that I will be used in a mega way. But I am doing such a small thing. My dear brothers and sisters, good to know Jesus as wheat. Good to know Jesus as wheat. But do not forget the very next type that word speaks about Jesus is he is Bali. He is Bali. He can multiply the moment you hand over to him. The moment you look up to him. He will multiply anything and everything that you submit to him. He is Bali. He is Bali. There are times when some of the struggles that we face in our house, in our family, in our place of work, and we feel, Lord, take me away from this. Remove me from this. It's so hard. There is so much of limitation. I can correlate with you if someone is going through this. I can correlate with you very easily. Because I come from a place where Christianity, Christians are in minority. You are always surrounded by people who do not know Christ. And you feel like, oh, there is so much of limitation. You feel like how good it would have been if we had all Christians around, godly people around. But you know, you know what? The moment we give that, we acknowledge that situation unto him. He is a God of multiplication. He is a God of multiplication. He will multiply it in such a way that he will change situations. If you have a boss who is troubling you, who is pinching you, and you feel, oh, either he should go away or I should go away. <laughs> Limitation. And that frustrates most of the time. <laughs> the best thing would be now start seeing Jesus as Bali hand it over to him keep praying remember Jesus led a life of limitation for 33 and a half years how tough it would have been for him how tough but he he contained, he sustained, and he continued to live in that life. He humbled himself to such an extent that he bore death. The limitation, can you understand the level of limitation? Who is going through death? God? Source of life? He is going through limitation of death? He was knowing the glory that is coming up in three days. And he knew the glory will be that mankind will be reconciled to the Father. And that will be such a joyous moment. If you are going through wheat time, wheat phase, hold on, hold on. Very soon the resurrected Christ will open the doors for you and you will find multiplication, the Bali time in your life. In your life. Amen. That's he's speaking about Bali. Let us go ahead into next. He goes on to say, speak about wines. And uh, uh, let me read one verse. Let us come into Judges. <clears throat> See, Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9 and I'm reading verse 13. And I'm reading from KJV. Judges 9, 13. 1, 3, 13. And the word says, And the wine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God, and man and go to be promoted over the trees are you getting the word the vine produces wine which is used to cherish cheer to make glad whom god 
as well as man. God as well as man. So the wine that this word is speaking about in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 8. The wine tree that is being spoken here is the one which will produce wine. And what is the purpose of wine? The purpose of wine is to cheer God as well as man. Very important to understand this. Typical characteristic. In one of the beautiful attitude video that I was recording, I was saying this, that in Luke, Gospel according to Luke, the word goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, Woe unto you if all men speak well about you. And he is saying so because people will speak well about you because they find you similar to them, similar to the world. If we are trying to satisfy and keep everyone happy, people will surely say good about you. But Jesus says, woe unto you if all people say good about you. And I was speaking about this with reference to one of the beautiful attitude that we find in gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 verse 10. Wherein he goes on to speak about persecution. Persecution. And he says that you will be persecuted when you stand for my sake. When you stand on my word. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if I do something for man because man wants... I may find favor of man, but what about God? The word is trying to teach me, the Jesus over here spoken is trying to teach me that I need to do such that my God as well as man, they both are delighted. I need to be a wine which will produce wine, which will produce such character, which will produce such lifestyle so that my God as well as man, they both need to be happy. Just man is worldly. It's not question of good and bad. The more we will be debating about good and bad that will lead to death. That's what we saw in the garden of Eden. But we need to see what is right. Not good or bad. But what is right. What is righteous. Because this righteous righteousness will, will cause cheer, delight to my father. As well as the mankind. As well as the mankind. So we need to be sensitive to the will of the father. And when we follow the will of the Father, we will not only delight Him, but we will delight mankind as well. Whatever He asks us to do, we will be able to do that successfully. And people will receive that. They will receive the blessings. At the same time, our Father will also be glad. So my dear brothers and sisters, this word wherein it says that he is wine. We need to understand. We need to taste Jesus. We need to know Jesus from this point of view. If we read all the gospels, now and again we will realize that Jesus did only what he heard from the Father. Only what he had seen Father doing. When he had been to Bethsaida, there was not only one person who was sick. There were many. But because he had heard from his father, he went to a specific person. He healed him and he moved away. He did what he heard from the father. And that's how you and I need to be. The wine which is produced from the wine plant cheereth. Father and man, says the word of God, says the word of God. And so should be you and I. We are not here as people pleasing people. We are not here to please the world. We are here to please the Father. And in doing so, 
world will be pleased. The world will be blessed. But how does this wine produces wine? You and I very well know, being in New Zealand, we know that unless the wine goes through being pressed, being crushed, it cannot produce good quality wine. So you and I are called, are called to be crushed, to be pressed in all ways. The more we are pressed, the more we are crushed, wine will come up which will satisfy the father and man. And man. My dear brothers and sisters, we are the wine who are called to be crushed, to bring delight. I like the word that KJV uses. Cheer. It, bring, it cheereth God and it cheereth man. Oh, wow. I can see that smile on my heavenly father's face. Why does that happen? How can that come? When I am crushed, when I am pressed, and then the wine comes off. Oh Lord, where is the crushing machine? Where is the pressing machine? I want to bring that smile on your face, Lord. Come now, I am here, crush me. Press me. Let me see that smile on my father's face. What a privilege. What a privilege. What else do we want in this life? If we can bring that smile on our creator's face by doing so, what else do we want? Hallelujah. God is good. He is the wine. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Okay. Let's see another word. One more. Four minutes. Uh, Judges again nine. Judges nine. Let us see verse 11. Oh, it's so tasty. It's so yummy. I am loving this. And verse 11 says, But the fig trees, Now next one was the fig tree. Okay, so we are coming to fig. So what, are we, what about the fig tree? What type of Jesus we get to know from fig tree? But the fig trees said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Can you pick these two words? The sweetness and the goodness of fig tree. Fig tree actually represents food for Israelites. In Israel, fig fruits are used as food. But look at this part. Of a Jesus is sweet. He is sweet, my dear brothers and sisters. Even in the crushing that you and I go through, even in the pressing that you and I may have to go through, he will release his sweetness. He will release his goodness. He will release his joy. Even when you are on the sick bed, even when you are going through different crises, even when your, your face is down because of different situations, hey, over here, you know, over here, deep down, in this part, he will release that goodness. He will release that sweetness. And he will tell you, do not worry. I am with you. Do not be worried. I am with you. I love you so much. I stand with you. I am your strength. Do not look outside. Just keep your eyes fixed on me. I will release my sweetness unto you. I will release my goodness unto you. Over here. Over here. He starts releasing that. He is our Jesus. He is our Jesus. He loves us so much. He gives that fig fruit full of sweetness and goodness unto you. Unto me. Oh, there is so much of fullness in him, my dear brothers and sisters. 
there is such a joy to be his child what a joy to be able to live in him for him and through him there is nothing better than this he is author of every good thing every good thing comes from the father everyone who believes on him who loves him and are in his purpose will see that there is goodness in everything everything hallelujah oh he's such a loving father we will surely see next to pomegranates olive and honey next sunday but now let's get ready for communion let's just look up to him who gave his body and blood so that we can receive jesus in the form of wheat in the form of barley in the form of wine in the form of fig if he had not given himself on the cross we would have not been able to know jesus the way we know him today my dear brothers and sisters the love that we have been receiving from him would have been so far away from us if we had not seen jesus doing what he did for you and for me on that cross he bore every stripe he allowed the crown of thorn to be put on his head he allowed people to mock at him spit on him slap him he allowed them to put that heavy log on his tired body he allowed those nails to be pierced in his hands and in his legs he allowed every single part of his body to be smashed and mashed by the stripes he became ugly for you and for me he gave his life because he knew in everything that he is going through that will cause blessing for everyone who believes on him today when you and i believe on him and when we remember the death of jesus christ and when we stand in front of the world that yes jesus died for me yes jesus rose on third day for me we stand as a witness we stand as a testimony we receive his new covenant when we receive the blood because this blood when he gave to his disciples he said this is the sign of the new covenant and you and i by this simple step of obedience of receiving his body and his blood we get into that new covenant of father of heavenly father let us just pray for the emblems and then we together can have this dear heavenly father lord we thank you for what jesus did on the cross jesus thank you for bearing everything for us and today you have removed that wall of separation between us and the father and you have dealt with every sin of ours and you have cleansed us and given us your righteousness so that we can call unto our father today so we thank you for what you did on the cross we acknowledge that we stand as a testimony and witness for that lord and we receive this as righteousness we receive your body we receive your blood in the form of this bread and juice lord we receive it father and we thank you lord that you are binding each one of us irrespective of geographical location you are binding each one of us in your love because we do so with one accord one heart and one mind 
so that your name be glorified in this world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us have communion. Shall we have it together? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening this word unto us. Thank you for helping us to understand your word, Lord. And we pray, Lord, as we have been hearing this word, let your truth set us free. If there is anyone who is going through any struggle, physical struggle or emotional struggle or financial struggle or family struggle or loneliness or any type of struggle, let your truth, your own word, release that blessing, release that deliverance, release that counsel, release that peace. Your word is enough for us, Lord. Your word can set us free. We receive your word this morning, Father. And we pray, Lord, everyone who is getting connected, bless them, Father God. I especially pray for all elders in our congregation. Lord, bless them, especially the ones who are by themselves. Lord, let your presence be always around them. Let they receive your love in a new way. Let their heart be full of joy, Father. We pray for everyone who is sick, Lord. We pray for Liz. We pray, pray for Isaac's son. We pray for Sarah. We pray for every other brother and sister Diane. who is sick, Lord. Diane. We pray for Diane. Lord, we pray for Grant. Father, we pray that your healing touch will come over them, Lord. By your stripes they are healed. Father, we claim that word for them and we pray, let your healing touch come over them. And they be healed, Lord. They be healed, Father. Fill them with your joy. Fill them with your shalom, Lord. Lord, we pray for Jeff, Lord. We pray for Kuljinder, Father God. We pray for their families, O oh Lord. Bless them and we especially pray for Kuljinder's mom. Let she find the deliverance in you, Jesus Christ. We speak your deliverance in her love. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We pray for our dear elders. We pray for Jeanette and we pray for Alan and we pray for Lindsay. Lord, bless them. You know their needs and wants, Father. Bless Lindsay, Lord. Physically and in every way. Bless Alan and Jeanette in your own way, Father God. Bless their kids and grandkids, O oh Lord God. We pray for our uh, deacons, Lord. Bless them, Father God. Let your blessing flow over them. We pray, we remember every single young adult, Lord. Strengthen them emotionally. Let them be able to see you in a new way. Lord, they are tomorrow's leaders. Let these situations and let these conditions help them understand you in a new way and be able to stand strong in you, Lord. We pray for their faith, Lord God. We pray for every person who is working these days. Thank you for your protection which has been over them last days. Lord, we pray you will continue that protection over them, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your blessings. Thank you, Jesus, for your provisions. Thank you, Jesus, for your joy that you have given us. We once again submit ourselves unto you, Lord. And as we move into this week, we enter into this week with full, full faith that this week shall be a week of health. This week shall be a week of knowing, loving and understanding you better. This week shall be a week of success. This week shall be a week of blessing as we move outside home and come back home in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. We glorify you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. And we pray in mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much for connecting.